Very good. So welcome officially, um, everyone. It's a pleasure to have you here with us. My name is Irene Kelly, and I am the Financial Education Program Manager here at WEAVE. And today, we're going to be talking about cash flow planning with QuickBooks. And to do that, we have our own WEAVE QuickBooks coach and an expert in the matter, David Mahachek. He's going to be guiding us through this conversation. A couple of items before we get started. We are going to have the Q&A at the end of the session, but if a question comes up, you're welcome to write it in the chat in the Q&A so we can keep track of, of the order for the Q&A. And if anything else comes up, please feel free to send me a, a message via chat. I'll be helping coordinate all the communications during this evening. So without further ado, David, thank you so much for your time today. And I'm going to mute myself. Let me know if you need anything. Very good. Thank you, Irene. And thank you all for taking time out of your busy schedules to spend a little time with us this evening. I'm sure cash flow is one of the more exciting subjects that you've had an opportunity to, to learn about. But the truth is that it really is extremely important to understand the concept of cash flow and how it applies to your business in order to have a successful business. And that's what I'd like to spend a little bit of time working with you on tonight. Brief overview of what we'll be covering in short is just a simple definition of what cash flow is, why it's important, and we'll learn some lessons from prior mistakes that yours truly has made, as well as other business owners. And then I'll take you through a step-by-step -step process of how to use your bookkeeping data from QuickBooks to create a cash flow forecast. And then finally, we'll talk about how you might be using your cash flow forecast in terms of being able to apply for a business loan, plan for your business future, and just make sure that your business is in overall good health. Then as Irene indicated, we'll take questions and answers at the end. But as we go, if a question occurs to you, go ahead and jot it down in the chat so that you don't have to remember it and you can, uh, we'll, we'll come back to it later on at the end of the presentation. What is cash flow? A simple Webster's definition is simply the total money coming into a business and moving out of a business. In basic bookkeeping and accounting, we always know where money comes from and where it goes. And quite simply, that's what cash flow analysis is about. Where does my money come from? Income, loans, and so forth. And where did it go? Perhaps I paid off a loan, or I bought inventory, or I made purchases and paid some expenses. A simple way to understand cash flow is this the typical money in comes from sales or services income, investments in the business. Perhaps you, as a business owner, have put personal money into the business. Perhaps you've received a loan from SBA or from a bank. Maybe you have a line of credit that's available to you either in the form of a credit card or so on. That's all money in to the business. Money out includes things like paying your business expenses, rent, employees. Hopefully, you're also paying yourself. So distributions of profits to you as the business owner. And we're going to emphasize this because when it comes to applying for a loan, one of the things that I see business owners making a mistake about is in the cash flow forecast, they fail to include paying themselves. And that actually looks bad if I'm considering a loan, because if I'm a lender and I'm thinking about how risky is this loan, what are the odds that this business owner is going to default and miss payments and so forth? If I see that you're not paying yourself from your business, I have no reason to believe that you will be in business because that's why we're in business is to make money and hopefully enough money for us to pay ourselves. So if you're not paying yourself, 
and that's not included in your cash flow forecast, that's actually a red flag for a lender. And maybe you're making principal payments on a loan. This is what a typical cash flow forecast uh, or statement of cash flows might look like. It's typically broken down into cash from normal operating activities. Net income is total sales minus total operating expenses equals net income from ordinary operations of your business. Change in inventory means that if here it's, you'll, you'll note that it's a negative number. That means that I added to inventory. So I reduced the amount of cash in my business because I purchased inventory. Then there's cash from financing activities. The typical entries here are what you pay into the business or take out of the business and loans received or principal paid. If you received a loan, that would be adding to cash. If you're paying off a loan, that's taking away from cash. And then net cash from financing activities. The sum of those two, net cash from operating activities plus net cash from financing activities equals the net cash increase. Add that to the cash available at the start of the period and you have the cash that should be in your bank at the end. A very simple statement of cash flows. Why is it important? Let me give you an example of a real world scenario. My partner and I, once upon a time, had Halloween stores. Halloween stores are great cash cows. We would do up to half a million dollars a year in Halloween costume sales. But 80% of all of that revenue came in in two months. 100% of our operating costs happened every month. If we did not plan for cash flow, even though we had a very profitable business, if we didn't have cash in the bank to pay rent, to pay employees, we had to order and pay for inventory six to eight months before the Halloween store opened, if we didn't plan cash flow, we had no business. We certainly could not have been able to pay a loan payment if we weren't planning for cash flow. So that's a strong example of why planning cash flow is important. We all in this past year had a, a wake up call about the importance of planning for cash flow when the COVID-19 crisis interrupted income for most every small business in America. The reason for the economic injury disaster loan that probably most everyone on this call tonight received was because most of those businesses did not have a cash reserve sufficient for them to pay their operating expenses when they were not receiving the income they usually did. As a rule, it's a good idea for a healthy business to have a, a healthy business with normal month to month income and normal month to month operating expenses to have a cash reserve sufficient to pay all of your operating costs, rent, employees, utilities, and so on, for a period of up to three months, ideally more, with no income. Now that seems like a lot of money to keep in cash, but it is one of the factors that we look for in a healthy business. How, how able are you going to be, if your income for the business is interrupted, are you going to be able to meet 
your ordinary expenses and are you going to have cash available to make your loan payments? Which is why I emphasize the second of these. When I am assessing the risk that a borrower will miss or default on loan payments, I want to see a cash flow forecast in order to assess how likely is it that this borrower is going to miss a payment or worse, default on the loan. Cash flow planning can also help you assess your business model because you can then do a, an easy break even analysis. How much income do I need to bring in each month in order to cover my basic operating costs? And at what point do I actually start making money from this business? That could help you also assess your, your revenue and pricing plan. Am I charging enough for my services? So let's say that I have operating expenses of $5,000 a month. And based on my revenue model, I can work 40 hours a week sell a certain number of my service packages and make that, but I don't make any money. I'm just an individual guy. I can't work any more than 40 hours a week. There's only so many hours in the day. So maybe if working 40 hours a week only gets me to my break even point, I need to reconsider what I'm charging for my services. Am I charging enough in order to make money on my business? Cash flow can help you with each of these fundamental areas of understanding your business. What I'd like to take with you through now is a simple method for forecasting cash flow. And in order to do so, I'm going to take you into a sample company that I've set up in QuickBooks. So this is a very simple company that I've set up for teaching purposes in QuickBooks. And in this case, it's a career development company that's modeled after one of my uh, self-employment companies that I actually do. Um, so the first step in developing your cash flow model is simply to run a profit and loss report. The typical profit and loss report is just a simple all income minus all expenses equals net income. I'm gonna run this for this year to the last month. The longer the report period, the better because it's going to help you assess what, are, what is my typical monthly income and what are my normal operating expenses. So running the profit and loss statement by month allows you to see that there's relative stability in my income flow and my expenses are also relatively predictable. If you are running this report and you, you find that, hey, my expenses are all over the place. One month, my expenses are $5,000. One month, my expenses are $2,000. That might indicate actually a record keeping problem because your expenses, your normal operating expenses, and this is income from normal business operations, sales, services, income, and expenses from normal business operations should be relatively smooth. If in this case, I go from $1,000 a month in expenses, and then one month I see my expenses jump up to $3,000, I would venture to bet I went out and bought a computer. And instead of recording that as a straight up expense, I would, the better thing to do for business planning purposes is to record that, 
to the balance sheet as a fixed asset and then take the depreciation expense on a monthly basis. So that, and that's why, by the way, we do record fixed asset purchases, furnishings, equipment, uh, items that have more than one year of useful life. We typically depreciate those costs over a period of time. And it's partly because you can see how a large purchase, if it was simply entered into the expenses here, would skew your data and throw off your data. For planning purposes, we want this to be as smooth as possible. The next step is to export the data to an Excel file. When you do so, you'll get an export that looks something like this. It is the report that you just ran, but now it's in an Excel file that you can edit and use. The first thing that I will have you do is add columns out for the rest of the period that you're forecasting. So here I've used color coding in order to indicate and distinguish between my actual financials and my pro forma financials. So the actual data is in green, the pro forma is in blue, and I use blue because it reminds me of the fact that this is a blue sky scenario. I'm forecasting based on everything working out pretty well. So here I've simply added columns. I'm only doing this uh, pro forma out to the end of the year. But if you're applying for a loan and asked for, you're asked for pro forma financials, you're probably going to need to forecast out for a couple of years. The process is the same. In the case of this very simple business, I'm rel it's pretty easy for me to forecast my income based on a conservative scenario. Your business might have more than one income stream. So if you're a retail store, you might have uh, income from your storefront and you might have income from online sales. The number of income accounts you'll have is determined by the number of key revenue streams. So main revenue streams. And here I would emphasize when it comes to bookkeeping, simple is good. And you can now see why. If I had a very complex chart of accounts, forecasting my income and expenses would be a lot more difficult and a lot more difficult for someone looking at my books to understand my business. But you might have more than one revenue stream and you can then forecast from those revenue streams because you know your business. In my case, I charge $295 for my signature service, which includes resume services, online profiles, and individual career counseling. That is by far the most popular choice of the people that I work with. And on average, if I look back at my business, I do at least 10 of those a month. So that's what I forecast is 10 signature service purchases per month through the end of the year. And that's where I get my revenue forecast. My expenses for this simple business, this is a home-based business. So it's again, it's very simple, but they're relatively stable. I have advertising, interest on a loan, typically spend a little bit every month on office supplies, paper, printer, ink, and so forth. I added a rent expense for this. So a, a basic office for me to work out of. That's a month to month, it doesn't change at all. Taxes and licenses do change because I had to renew my business license and that happens once a year. And then 
uh, telephone and internet expenses are stable. It's the same cost every month. So I can forecast my main revenue and main expenses month to month out for as long as I wish. The next step in your cash flow forecast is to take the data from your PL and actually use it to forecast what money you are likely to have in the bank at the end of each of those periods that we've discussed. So the next step is once you've populated the PL for the pro forma PL for as long as you need to, we'll add the pro forma cash flow. We start as we did in the in the slide presentation with net income from ordinary business operations. All we have to do is use a simple formula and take that income amount from the pro forma profit and loss statement net income from ordinary business operations. In my case, I'm not buying inventory, but in the case of the Halloween store that I mentioned earlier, we might forecast that we're gonna buy $50,000 worth of inventory in these two months. And we know to plan that we're gonna need cash for, for those inventory purchases. And we can go ahead and add that here. That would be entered as a negative number because you're drawing from cash and adding to inventory. Then financing activities. Because this is self-employment, instead of including myself in a payroll expense, I've simply indicated that I plan to take $1,500 a month from my business for myself. The rest of the money remains available in my business for cash flow reserve, or maybe I'm planning an expansion or uh, some new uh, business endeavors. Forecasting principal on a loan, if you receive a loan, it would be entered as a positive number because you're adding to cash. In my case, I'm taking from cash the amount that I'm paying toward principal on that loan every month. The interest is in as an expense that's forecast out in the, the pro forma profit and loss. So if I'm paying $50 a month on this loan, $28 is going to interest, $13, my math is wrong there, but the rest is going toward the principal of the loan. The easy way to forecast principal and interest on a loan is, I'll move some things out of the way here. I like the bank rate loan amortization calculator. If you are a whiz in Microsoft Excel, you can also create a, a spreadsheet uh, attached to your pro forma. You can add another sheet and do the amortization using the amortization function in Excel. But if like me, you are not a whiz using Excel, you can go to bankrate.com and they have a free loan amortization calculator that will give you the numbers that you need. So let's say I got a $25,000 economic injury disaster loan. The loan term is 30 years. The interest rate is 3.75%. So bank rate tells me my monthly payment is going to be 115.78. And by opening the loan amortization schedule, bank rate will tell me for each month, each payment, how much will be applied to principal and how much will be applied to interest. 
On that note, by the way, it's worth noting, uh, uh, once again, I'm assuming that all of you have probably received an economic injury disaster loan. It's worth noting that if you take 30 years to repay your idle loan, even at the low interest rate of 3.75%, every dollar of the loan money you use is going to cost you $1.61 over the course of the loan. So it's worth being mindful of that. Uh, definitely, we were glad we had the loans. Um, it did help a lot of people who did not have a cash flow reserve to meet their operating costs. But um, you know, get those loans paid off as quickly as you can and save yourself the interest and rebuild your operating reserve. But you can now then take this data, principal and interest, from bank rate and use it to forecast how much money is going to go toward principal and how much money will go toward interest each month in your pro forma financials. Net income from operating activities plus net cash from financing activities, which in my case is negative, equals the net cash increase for that period. If I started January with $12,000 in the bank, I end January with 14,000 in the bank. That simple calculation, all you have to do is take this simple formula, B26 plus B30, Copy it and paste it across the rest of the columns. It's a very simple way to do your pro forma cash flow in using your actual QuickBooks data and then forecasting that out for the rest of the period. Based on what you see here, would I be a good loan risk? Probably so. If, let's say that instead of this blue sky scenario, I decided to take the month of April off. Heck, maybe I'm going to Tahiti and I'll take a couple of months. What's the risk that my business is not going to be able to make its loan payments? Virtually none. I'm going to have cash in the bank even if I stop work, I'm gonna have enough cash in the bank to meet my loan obligations and keep my doors open and pay myself through that time. So I'm experienced, my business has experienced an interruption of income, but because I've done the cash flow planning, I'm still in business, even if I have an interruption. And you can see now why a three-month cash flow, cash reserve is a good idea. If you're self-employed, it's a good idea not only to have a cash flow reserve for your business, but also for yourself. What would happen to my ability to meet my personal obligations, my rent or my mortgage payment, buy food, pay my car payment? if I had an interruption of income from my business and I was unable to work. A cash flow reserve for your personal life is a good idea as well. And the same principle applies. So using this cash flow, we can do a number of things. Let's say, let's go back to We can use this to create hypothetical scenarios. Let's ask what would happen if uh, I decided I didn't want to do all of the work myself anymore. Maybe as part of a business expansion plan, I decided that I might like to add an employee. Let's put them here.
And I'm just guessing that I would probably have to pay a part-time employee $20 an hour. And let's see how that works out. So $20 an hour times 40 hours, or well, let's do half time. 20 hours a week times 52 weeks in the year divided by 12 months, about $1,700 a month. So let's say that I plan to bring on a new employee and pay them $1,700 a month to help me in growing my business. I might also want to adjust my income forecast because by adding an employee, I can now handle more customers than I could before. So I can take on additional clients, recognizing that I only have 40 hours a week to devote to this business. I can, I can take on additional clients. So maybe I can increase my revenue forecast by a certain percentage each month. Can I afford to take on an employee? Yes, I can. And I can afford that investment, even though, you know, just even, even if I'm only making what I was before, I can afford the investment and the risk and still have cash to pay that employee, even if my plan doesn't work. And, but chances are it will, and I can then add, you know, maybe instead of 10 resumes a month, I can do 15. I can forecast that out to see whether or not that employee is worth it. Do I come up better? So it's a very, very simple method for forecasting cash flow. You can do this easily for as many years as you need to. A typical cash flow forecast would be approximately two to three years if you're applying for a loan. And if you're applying for a small business administration loan, such as those that are available through Women's Economic Adventure, uh, Adventures, is going to request at least a two-year cash flow forecast to determine whether or not you are a good risk for this loan. Um, in this particular case, I think we're at pretty good risk. Um, and I would probably have no trouble, even though, um, you know, I don't know what I would use the loan for in this particular case, but if I was seeking out a loan, I would be considered a pretty good risk. Um, so I think with that, that's the, the basic forecast. Let's turn to questions and answers. We should have plenty of time. So has anything come in, Irene? Yes, let me. Go to see the order of events here. So we had um, at the at the beginning of the session we had a question about whether or, or not this process applies also to QuickBooks Desktop. Yes, the process the the export function in QuickBooks Desktop is identical. You run run the profit and loss statement, customize the statement so that it runs by month, review it to make sure that everything's nice and smooth. And again, if you spot that there's a month where you've got an unusual jump in expenses, you might want to consider why that is so that it doesn't skew your data. But just like with QuickBooks Online, you can uh, export this, this report into an Excel file and from there, the process is very much the same. Um, and once again, I, you know, I can't emphasize enough how important keeping your chart of accounts simple really is. When it comes to understanding your business, if I'm an outsider looking at your business, the more I have to think about your business, the more explanation is required for me to understand your cash flow forecast, the less likely I am to invest in you. 
And we also got a very good question. What happens when you're a new business and you haven't done any sales yet and you are asked to develop a, a cash flow forecast? Okay. So in that case, I think I would you could start with um, the basic chart of accounts in QuickBooks if you're already using QuickBooks includes when you set up QuickBooks by default automatically, these major expense categories are set up for you. These are the categories that a typical business will have. Your, a typical business is going to have marketing expenses, interest expense, office supplies, rent, taxes, payroll, all of those accounts have already been set up for you in QuickBooks. So you could actually use the QuickBooks chart of accounts and just use the income and expense accounts to create your model P&L. And then admittedly, when you're doing this in your Excel file, you're going to have to make some assumptions about how much income and, and revenue you can generate. Um, you'll probably, in your first run, you'll probably do a blue sky scenario, which is in the best case scenario, I think I can sell 200 widgets a month. Those widgets are going to cost me. So here I don't have a cost of goods sold line that would normally come between income and expenses, which is what, what those widgets cost me. So if I can sell 200 widgets each, I, I make $20 on each, each costs me $10. Um, and then I have to pay advertising, I have to pay rent, I have to pay myself. You can forecast all that out and run the first scenario as a blue sky scenario. But we understand that you're working with hypothetical numbers. We, that's why we, we alert the reader that these are pro forma numbers. This is looking forward. This hasn't happened yet. And that's the best you can offer at that point in your business. It's the best we can offer even in a simple business like this, where it's relatively easy to forecast. We don't know. There's a lot of unknowns out here. There's a COVID crisis that interrupts income. There's a mudslide that keeps me from opening my business for a couple of months. Uh, there's a fire that keeps me from opening my business. There's a lot of unknowns in business. Going into business for ourselves is a pretty risky endeavor. So, but we can't account for the unknowns. All we can account for is the hypotheticals. So a typical hypothetical would start with sort of best case scenario numbers, what I hope to do. And then you could simply copy this spreadsheet and rename it sort of worst case. and run a hypothetical. What if instead of my best case, I did 20% less than I think I can do? How does that affect my business? Or what if I can't find a suitable office for $800 and I have to pay 12? You can run through different hypothetical scenarios um, in, in that particular case. And what you wanna do is what you're demonstrating in running those hypotheticals as a new business owner who's just getting started is that you've given this some thought. Where is, what is my revenue model? Where is, my, where is the income for this business going to come from? What's my pricing model? You can actually spell that out. Uh, sometimes I'll actually add a sheet 
that is specifically for describing my revenue model. So maybe I have a, you, um, uh, what's, what's a scenario? Um, I'm going to open up an auto body paint shop. And uh, a typical paint job is going to cost $500. And I think I can do 20 of them a month. That pricing model, $500 for a paint job uh, is my price model. And my revenue model is I'm going to try and do 20 a month. So then you can add other services. So, you know, body repair services. You might want to use perhaps an hourly rate to indicate what you're, you know, how much you think you can earn each month from body repair. So your, your pricing model is going to be based on price per unit of whatever it is you're selling, whether it's a service or a product, you're going to have some price per unit. And then your revenue model is how many of those you expect to sell each month. Um, so we understand looking at this with a new business that this is a forecast, but it does demonstrate that you have given it thought. Now, if you are a new business working on a business plan, I would strongly encourage you to consider subscribing to Live Plan. This is a business planning tool that you can use. Let's see if I can remember my login screen. And this is also a platform we utilize in our business planning courses. One of the courses that is based out of this, uh, this life plan platform that David is, is showing us. I may not be able to remember my password. And David, right now that you're, you're sharing uh, for new business owners and the assumptions that, that, that we have to make, we have another question that is related to this um, to this issue of assumptions. So, how do you forecast income if that depends on people walking in the door, which which is hard to predict? It's a similar concept, right? Of those of those underlying assumptions. Yes. So that would be a case for a retail storefront, where walk-in business, you have to make some assumptions. And you could take a look when you're scouting out a location, actually, how many people uh, pass by there every day. You could ask other businesses and look to see whether there are businesses in the vicinity that attract customers like yours. So, you know, let's say that I'm opening up, a, 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 you know, a, a boutique for fancy shoes. If I'm scouting out a location, maybe it has a lot of walk by traffic, but it's tucked in between, uh, you know, a bail bondsman and uh, uh, and a liquor store. Are my customers are customers that are going to be likely to buy a $400 pair of men's shoes likely to be the walk by customers? Probably not. So you can actually when you're investigating a location you know, spend a little time looking at it. Who are the businesses in the vicinity? Do they attract the kind of customers that I'm looking for? And approximately, what is the foot traffic by there on a on a day to day basis? Um, and then you use that to make some assumptions about what percentage of the customers that walk by walk in. And what percentage of the customers who walk in make a purchase? So based on that data, you can, you can do a little research and it pays to do your research, especially if you are scouting out a location as to what is the walk by traffic like? How much walk by traffic is there? And are, is the walk by traffic the customer that I'm hoping to bring in my store? Uh, if the answer is no, then you probably scout out a different location. Um, but you do have to make certain assumptions about 
uh, you know, the percentage of the people who walk by who will walk in and the percentage of those who uh, walk in make a purchase. So you have, you have to do a lot of assumptions. You spell those assumptions out in your forecast. So with live plan to get back to this, this is a, a tool that Women's Economic Ventures likes its clients to use with business planning, whether you're planning to start a brand new business or you're planning perhaps to expand or pivot an existing business, Live Plan takes you through the step-by-step -step of uh, doing the forecasting for you. And what I really like is here it has you add what is the revenue stream. So you can call the revenue stream whatever you want. What kind of revenue stream is it? How many units of that product or service do you expect to sell every month? You can also do this if you know, for instance, that your business is seasonal my Halloween store, we'd probably have, you know, most of the units here. So, you know, if that unit was costume sales, for instance, at an average price of $25, we'd probably figure about 80% of those sales would occur right here. And we can forecast that. And then what is the price per unit? So this planning software takes you through the step-by-step -step of forecasting. What are your revenue streams? What do those products cost? Um, what, are, what are my personnel expenses? What are my operating expenses? What assets am I bringing to the table? How good are my clients at paying me on time? Do I have terms for extended payment periods with my vendors? All of those are assumptions that you can build into your forecast. And the result is a full set of pro forma financials in a format that you can easily produce that includes, you can do your whole business plan, both the, um, I don't even know if I have on this one, this was a sample, but, um, so I didn't do any of the narrative part of the plan, but you can actually add your whole narrative part of your business plan here as well. Uh, you can create a slideshow if you need to create a pitch deck for investors you can create that here and it'll all be part of your business plan. But here you can see is the pro forma, a full set of pro forma financial statements to determine whether or not this is a good investment. And this, this, this as, it, as we've said, is a program that we like clients to use at Weave because it does such a nice job. So did that answer the question? Is there anything else? That definitely did, David, thank you. And we do have a, another question. Can you organize personal finances in QuickBooks? Yes. In QuickBooks Online or in QuickBooks Desktop, I would strongly encourage the typical business owner to make sure that your business income and expenses are in an entirely separate set of books from your personal income and expenses. Make sure that personal finances and business finances are segregated. That means when you're setting up checking accounts, 
in QuickBooks, this for your, your books for your business should be your business checking, your business savings, your business credit card. And the books that you use for your personal should be your personal checking, your personal savings, your personal credit cards. In as much as possible, avoid using your personal credit card to pay business expenses. You can record that transaction, but it's, it's, it's much cleaner and you're less likely to make a mistake if you do a good job of keeping your business income and expenses separate from your personal. Um, but other than that, the chart of accounts in QuickBooks, you can set it up with uh, you know the, the same categories that you would. You probably wouldn't have advertising expenses for, uh, for your personal accounts, but let's say you have an automobile loan. You can set that up in QuickBooks and keep track of, of interest and uh, principal payments on an automobile loan. You can keep track of your rent or mortgage payments, um, your, your IRA, if you make contributions to a retirement account. And I do this for myself, actually. That's, uh, I've been using, I use QuickBooks desktop because that allows me to have as many businesses as I want set up. Whereas with QuickBooks Online, you'll need a separate QuickBooks Online account for each entity. So you would need a QuickBooks Online account for your business and a QuickBooks Online account for your personal. The good news is, while that does mean you're paying for two subscriptions, the personal you can, I can pretty much guarantee you, you can get away with the least expensive version of QuickBooks Online to handle your personal finances. So it's a good idea. I, and I think it's very useful, um, you know, not only for the financial, your own personal financial health to understand where my money comes from and where it goes. And I can tell you that uh, after years and years of experience <laughs> helping people with this stuff, financially successful people know where their money comes from and they know where it goes. They understand cash flow. They understand where their revenue is from and they understand what their expenses are. And they make sure that those are consistent with their personal financial goals and values. Financially healthy couples and in fact, emotionally healthy couples spend time looking at their finances together. So the, the using QuickBooks or using some accounting software to keep track of and periodically review your personal expenses could actually help your relationship. Some of the happiest couples I know spend time at least once a month looking at their finances and asking themselves, are we on budget? Are we in agreement on this? And are these, you know, is, our, is what we've been doing with our finances consistent with our long-term goals as a couple? Um, so it's, it's not only good for your personal financial health, it's actually good for your relationship to spend a little bit of time uh, uh, keeping track of your personal finances. And QuickBooks is a great tool for doing that. I think we have time for at least one more. And we just got one more. And I also want to recommend Mint. Mint is um, a good, good uh, software for personal finances that I really like. It creates these really cool graphs for you. You can identify where your money is going based on percentages. And um, to what David has been sharing, I'm just going to say amen to that because it's absolutely true. If we use technology to automate these processes, we're going to make, keep, it, keep it simple. So the question um, is, one of our participants used to use Quicken. Now her personal finances uh, are in, in QuickBooks. What can be used in QuickBooks for investment info? 
So actually you can set up an account. And typically I would set this up as a, um, as an other income account. So in QuickBooks Online, you'll select account type, other income. And then you can see that investment income is one of the types. So if you receive dividends or interest payments, and what happens is this income goes below the line. It's, out, it's outside of the ordinary operating income and expenses. So I typically have for my retirement accounts, I have an other income account that's called unrealized gains and losses. And I use this account to reconcile my individual retirement account or actually all of my investment accounts because the value of my investments changes every month. So whenever I get the statement, I want to reconcile the statement with QuickBooks, I can record the change in value of my investments as unrealized gains and losses. Um, and that goes below the line on the income statement. Um, let me enter a deposit here. So we'll call, see if I don't have that account set up. Set up an IRA here. So let's say I make a um, deposit to my IRA. And I'll just take it from equity. And then let's say that um, Let's say that I had a good month and the value of my investments went up. I run a profit and loss. You can see that ordinary income is up here under ordinary income, ordinary operating expenses are my month to month expenses that we've been talking about. And I have my unrealized gains and losses down here below the line. And that's good because that would, if, if I didn't have it here below the line, this is not income from the ordinary operation of my business. So uh, we don't want it to skew my data. Um, the same thing happens, by the way, if you need to, if you are lucky and, and you get, as most of us will, but you've, you've received a PPP loan, payroll protection program loan, and that loan is forgiven. It's probably currently sitting on your balance sheet. I don't recall if I have one here or not. Well, I've got an idle loan here. So right now it's sitting on your balance sheet or should be sitting on your balance sheet as a, as a liability because until the loan is forgiven, you have to pay it back. But once the loan is forgiven, you can record, in this case, it's going to be a journal entry. Cool. 
And while you do that, David, um, we're close to time. So I do want to share with everyone. I added in our chat two links. One link is for our events tab. We have some very interesting webinars uh, coming up. And I also shared with you our financial empowerment and QuickBooks tab uh, within our webpage. If you want to learn more about QuickBooks, we do have a QuickBooks training coming up. It's a six week training. It's a wonderful way to gain confidence utilizing QuickBooks. And all of the information is in that link. And I also left my email in case anybody has any questions. And you're also going to be able to find other webinars that we've been uh, offering and recording with David about similar and very useful topics using QuickBooks. So I just wanted to, to give that uh, announcement. So to wrap up then, what I did was I just wrote off the loan. And you can see that the income from the loan is not going to skew my ordinary business income and my net op. So for cash flow planning purposes, you couldn't forecast that. Um, so we put it down here below the ordinary income from business operations. Okay. So thank you all for spending the early part of my evening, or uh, your evening with me. Uh, I really appreciate it. And we will look forward to bringing you more in the future.